Uh, Elon Musk is, uh, is under trial today, yesterday and today. He, st he testified yesterday, he's testifying today uh, in a trial brought against him by shareholders of Tesla um, who claim that a tweet he made in 2018 God, I, I closed I closed the, the the window where I had the uh, the tweet lined up for you guys so I could read you the exact tweet that Elon Musk uh, sent. But there it is, I got it. All right, so this is the tweet Elon Musk tweeted in twenty uh, in twenty eighteen. Um, all right, come on, open. There we go. All right, quote. I'm considering taking Tesla private at $420 per share. Funding secured. Now, at the time, Tesla stock was trading at significantly below $420 a share, about 20% below. This is going to be a 20% premium uh, over, over the price. So again, I'm considering taking Tesla private at $420 a share, funding secured. Now, it turned out days later that he was not going to take Tesla private and that the funding was not secured in the sense that he uh, was still negotiating with the Saudis. Uh, the Saudis were going to provide the money to buy Tesla. And um, he, he, was still he was negotiating with them. It turned out that they backed off the deal to buy Tesla, uh, help him buy Tesla at $420 a share. So the question is, did he mislead investors here? Did this cause investors to lose money? Did this tweet, tweet, remember this was a tweet, um, that this tweet was, um, uh, you know, caused people to, to buy Tesla in anticipation that the stock would go up to 420? Did this lead uh, people to, I don't know, cover positions, change positions? Did it change their behavior? And, and the answer to that is, I think, yeah, it, it must have. I mean, th this is real information. It, remember, at the time, Elon Musk was both chairman of the board and the CEO of Tesla. So there's no question that a tweet like this, which provides new, vital information, important information, significant information to your investment, would change your behavior as an investor. But then the question is, okay, but was this was this a, a um, you know just uh, providing information to investors, and then it turned out the information didn't come true and tough, or is this does this constitute um, deception? And the deception again, and, and a lot of this is going to go down to the way the law is written. But deception, I think, has to do with partially with intent and, and uh, partially with did Elon Musk actually consider taking Tesla private or was he lying? And the second question was, is, was funding secured or at least was Elon Musk convinced that funding was secured? Now, this is a case that's already been decided by the SEC, in a sense. The SEC decided that this was, um, uh, this was uh, uh, inappropriate communication by the CEO. Uh, it decided that this uh, hurt investors, that this was, uh, you know, a, a, a violating, violation of uh, Elon Musk's fiduciary responsibility uh, to Tesla shareholders. And they have fined... Uh, they have massively fined Tesla for this, and they fined Elon Musk. So all of that is already done. And, I, you know, there, I think you would know my position. My position is SEC shouldn't exist. This is not the purview of this, the SEC. Uh, the SEC should be looking for fraud. Uh, there's no reason to believe this is fraud. Um, the SEC should be butting out of this. On the other hand, this lawsuit is completely appropriate. The lawsuit actually makes sense. This is the appropriate venue to, you know, get the facts and for a jury to decide whether this was, this tweet 
uh, was, uh, was deceptive and whether Elon Musk knew it was deceptive and whether he had violated his fiduciary responsibility shareholders. This is the forum in which these kind of issues should be uh, discussed. Now, let me just say that if any CEO out there had said this about his company and it turned out not to be true, they would have been fined by the SEC. Indeed, my guess is that Elon Musk, because of the high profile that he has, probably got off easy from the SEC. Uh, I think another CEO would have been, you know, would, would have just been destroyed by something like this by the SEC. All right, so, but remember, this is not, okay, put that aside. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, so this is Tesla, um, 2018, I think this tweet was put out in 2018. So the real issue here is um, a legal issue. Did, what did Elon Musk know? What did he have reasonable reason to think? When he said funding secured, did he have reason to think so? Now, Musk is saying, look, I actually did intend to take Tesla private, I was considering it. He doesn't say here it's a done deal. And I actually thought the funding was secured. And, he, and, he, and he, think, he says, look, I had a handshake deal with the Saudis and then they backed down. I had talked to another other people who, who said they would probably back the deal. I mean, my guess here is that funding secured is... Um, is inaccurate and wrong, and he shouldn't have said it because the funding wasn't secured. My guess is that legally funding secured means something. You have a contract. You have a real commitment. It's clear that he didn't. I think this is why one shouldn't communicate by tweet important issues because tweets tend to be loose. I mean, but that's what he's testifying. He testified yesterday. Uh, he, he said um, he actually thought he was doing the right thing. He said that he made this announcement um, uh, in order to let all investors know because on the, the next day there was going to be a, um, a, uh, a story in the Financial Times that suggested this as, an uh, as a possibility. By the way, if he just let the Financial Times article come out the next day, he would have spared himself all this legal trouble, all these fines. Anybody with a little sensibility with regard to the SEC, anybody with a little sensibility with regard to shareholders and what, you know, shareholder lawsuits, you don't make these kind of public statements. You just don't. So this is a little bit of Elon Musk being impulsive. This is a little bit of Elon Musk um, uh, you know, not talking to lawyers before making an announcement, which any other CEO would have done. You know, maybe this is uh, inevitable. If you get C Elon Musk as a CEO, he's going to do things like that. He has testified uh, in the court case that he believed he absolutely had the funding secured. Um, and he also said that he was definitely considering taking Tesla private, but was not committing to doing it. My guess is, my guess is that he is going to be exonerated here, but it, it really is hard to tell. I mean, it could be that they get somebody from the Saudi investment fund to come on and say, no, we never had a, a, a handshake deal. Elon Musk is lying. And then, and then he gets, then he gets found guilty. So this is, this is going to rely on, this is not some I mean, this is not a crazy case. This is not some witch hunt. Uh, although, again, uh, you know, I, I, I reject the idea that the SEC should be doing this. But this is, in the court, this makes complete, complete sense. Um, if you're going to be a CEO in a modern corporation and you know, don't want to destroy your company um, uh, because it's in a heavily regulated uh, business, if you want to accept government money and by uh, implication have accepted the SEC's role in regulating you and everything else and, and the framework of uh, corporate law that exists today, 
You better have lawyers. You better have lawyers. And uh, if you don't, then don't be surprised by what happens. So exactly what happens, uh, we will see. Uh, I think Elon is presenting the defense of basically, I thought it was a done deal, and I had every positive intention. And I did say consider. Uh, I think the burden of proof here is fairly high that he didn't. I think that uh, you know, you're going to have to get somebody saying, no, we never promised anything. I don't know if the Saudis are going to be testifying. Uh, but it will be interesting. Uh, it would be interesting if they do, and uh, and if they do what they say. But uh, this is one of the uh, usually class action lawsuits like this are completely nuts and completely devout of any merit. Here, there's at least some merit. You can understand why people who maybe bought on that assumption or sold on that assumption, if they were holding options, um, are pissed off uh, and and feel like they were manipulated. All right, that is in the news. We will see what happens to Elon Musk. I'll fill you in once there's a verdict and when there's a decision. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.